Oh boy. <clears throat> well, if you're in the market for mobile workers for your Gundam Barbatos 1100 scale master grade, but you don't want to wait till December when the expansion pack for said master grade comes out, or you are unable to pre order one, which is crazy because most people who are really into Iron Blood Orphans seem to be all over everything Barbatos these days, then you can buy this resin kit from Slicker Studios. Slicker Studios is a fairly well-known resin model maker. I've been aware of many of their kits. I think I've ordered some. I'll have to check my backlog. But so far, this is the first one I've seen for 1100 scale. So I grabbed it. They're not exactly readily available in America. Like once in a while, you might be able to catch one on eBay or something. But overall, if you're really looking for one right now, you're probably going to have to go to a Chinese site and be completely confused by the kanji. Now, under normal circumstances, this would be a video that would be, you know, all cinematic. It'd be like a commercial. We'd have all that stuff going on. But since my backup editor, who usually does those, is currently working on Sananju, and I don't want people to wait any longer for any more content because it's like a drip feed right now from here, let's do something out of the ordinary, more reminiscent to what I used to do. Ramble on. Where's my guitar? And nobody wants to hear me play Led Zeppelin songs. Anyway. I'd say this resin kit is decent. I find the castings to be good, and I'm under the impression that this was actually originally a 3D print that they then molded to make copies of. It makes perfect sense. I don't really have anything negative to say about the castings. I like them. They're pretty good. They're pretty slick and clean. Mm, Orga could use more definition, but I guess it would be expected from a third-party maker, despite the fact that the figure doesn't have that much muscle definition that you can really sort of bring out with washes, this will lead to you having to paint more. We'll get into that later. The usual spiel with all uh, these resin kits is, ba da bop ba da bop you gotta wash them. So I recommend, believe it or not, Purple Power. It's cheap, it's readily available, you get a whole shit ton of it, I just spilled it on the table, and yeah, it works. I also tried Gaia Notes Resin Wash, and they said, you know, you can use it and have it ready to go in 45 minutes. I don't believe that's true. I've used it exactly to what they recommended, and I wasn't pleased with the results when it came to the Sasa B resin kit that I worked on. But then again, that was a cheap knockoff of an Anchor T kit slash Infinite Dimensions. So there could be other reasons why it didn't work well. So currently, I'm not fighting a good thing, and I'm using Purple Power. I'd recommend it. And the usual, you know, you clean up these little thing this is like once the resin is clean it's a lot like working with a plastic kit the only difference is the dust is poisonous wear a mask oh and goggles you don't want this dust getting in your eyes believe me i did it sucks ass you know i know we all like to think we're superman until something doesn't work right then you're calling your pediatrician for help there isn't much to say about the process in and of itself so we're gonna fast forward through this because i'm an asshole I broke out my favorite airbrush for small scale. I forgot what the hell this thing's called. I think it's like Mr. Hobby Pipcon something or other PS770. Now, I haven't done a review for this, though I should. Uh, this airbrush is fantastic. It's as close as you're going to get to a custom Micron without paying $500 for one. It's still expensive, though. This costs just as much as my Highline C from Iowata. So you're looking at 250 bucks. But then again, the official one from Iowata is 500 plus dollars. You do the math. Though I wouldn't mind trying the Iowata one. I'll say it's a good airbrush. But the kicker with this airbrush is you cannot get your mix ratio wrong. Like paint has to be real thin for this thing. Otherwise it chokes on it. And it's the last thing you want. I can't stand... Um, airbrush work that has like you know it's like a grady look it's not like a clean spray you should always try and make sure that your airbrush stuff blows or else it transitions to the paint job it's visible you know it, it's something you should work on personally um that's for me so i washed out the airbrush and we did it again i tend to wash out my airbrush every time i change colors you don't have to do this most people don't. I do. 
I find this to be a good practice. You get used to it. It doesn't bother you. It keeps the inside of your airbrush clean. My outside of the airbrush could use a wash in the inside. You know, I usually keep up on it so that there's never any buildup of any sort of paint or gunk. It's something I do. It's very time consuming. It's probably also why my airbrush work takes forever because I clean and flush after every color. But if you want transitions like I do, you better do that. I'm going for the black backing, similar to a Zenithal highlight, similar to the Max Watanabe style, similar to the uh, model airplane style. You don't have to do this. It's more time consuming. <laughs> Everything I do with painting is time consuming. And I want you to understand that. That's why my videos take forever because uh, that's just my paint style. It's not really meant for fast turnaround times. You know, because I don't care about that anymore, really. Like, I want to paint something that I can look at and not be disgusted with it later. And enough of me pontificating. Now we're moving on to the paints. Now, originally I was going to mix my own paints because the mobile workers from Tenkata are very sort of like militaristic, yellowish brown, sandy, baby puke or baby shit color. Thankfully... I did myself a favor in the past and I bought a lot and I bought a lot of gyno colors, including military colors, a couple of them. I didn't get them all, which I lament that I didn't when I had the shot. But so far, I'm really, really getting into Gaia notes, which is weird. It's like right now it used to be mainly Bandai's uh, Mr. Hobby colors or whatever and some Gaia notes. And now it's kind of like Gaia notes and Bandai are neck and neck. And then I use Vallejo Met colors. I also got in the splash paints. You don't need all that. We're going to use, I believe, dark yellow too. Could be one. I can't remember. You see these paints. Get them if you want them. I was lazy. I didn't feel like mixing colors. That's why I have so many colors. You don't need as many colors as I have. But if you don't feel like constantly mixing custom colors, this is a great way to work around that. Or at least it'll start you off with a base color that's close to what you want. And then you can just like slightly tweak it till you have the color or shade you are interested in. This is why I have so many paints. A good modeler or painter does not need that many colors. A lazy modeler or painter such as myself will have as many colors as possible so I can skip, you know, mixing it. It's a pain in the ass really. And then if you get a good mix and you don't remember what you mixed, oh my God, it's the absolute worst. You treat that paint like it's gold. Oh my god, I can't lose this special premium blue color I made up one night while I was drunk. No. The problem with Gynos colors is if they sit in the bottle too long, dude, all the pigmentation coagulates at the absolute bottom. And even if you have like the little, you know, electronic spin mixer thing, it still can't pull that crap off. So then you got to put the thinner in there. You got to put it in your electronic shaker for the next 10 minutes so you can smell the gears burning. Oh boy. Oh, the miniature figures. One comes with a custom Orga. I kind of wished it like uh, they did something more because there's only one Orga design. It's like the one with him moving his hair back and he's in the tank and there's the one with him standing moving his hair back. I would have liked maybe a different version that was standing, but whatever, who cares? You know, an Orga figure is exactly what I wanted because he's a character I liked in the anime the most. Yeah, everybody else is like Mika. I'm like... Uh, character has no like there's no development there <laughs> you know even berserk guts his development whatever i'm not gonna argue anime semantics with you though i probably should do reviews of animes probably get more views than my paint work honest to god no oh, anyway we're painting the miniature figures and i'm using the smallest airbrush i have i would recommend having multiple airbrushes for different jobs you wouldn't work on a car or a motorcycle only with a hammer if you catch my drift and anyone who's worked on a vehicle knows what I'm talking about there's a different tool for each job sure you could probably get around it with other tools that aren't meant for that but it doesn't make the job any easier that's the point I'm trying to make make your life as easy as possible when you're rushing. god damn it and also get a dog that's mute see who needs to pay for like an alarm when you have a small dog that's wired anything moves Fluffy's on it if a pigeon farts, Fluffy's on it. Get out of here, Fluff. Fine, sit on my lap. 
All right, let's just skip talking about painting the figures because it's basic stuff I've shown you before. If you want an in, a more in-depth video of me painting these miniature figures, there is a how-to video. There's a lot of how-tos. Many of your questions have already been answered. If you go to the how-to section, there's a whole playlist. I can't stress this enough. Gundam, how do you do this thing you already did a video on? Watch the video. Watch the video! Sorry, Fluffy. I'm not calling you. Where are we at with this uh, still painting? Uh, I'm going to admit I didn't go crazy on these. I wasn't... I've got other projects I have to do, other obligations. And I just really wanted to paint this kit. So when I saw it, I bought it and I got to work on it within the course of like two weeks as soon as Sinanji was done. So I didn't go all out on this. So don't follow this thinking it's like the be all of everything I was doing. No, I this is a speed build for me. I just wanted them to look good, look nice, and be with the Barbatos. Because, you know, it'd be interesting to do this. Because I don't see too many people doing, like, weird little resin kits that you don't find too often. Yes, I know the barrel on that gun is a little crooked. I put it in hot water and shaped it back. It looked good. The next day, it moved back to being crooked. I said, screw it. You <laughs> know? I don't care at all. Weathering of these small kits and glue. Uh, the glue I'm using here is a Gorilla Glue gel glue. I believe Dave's World may have suggested it to me. I don't remember what the name of it is, but if you look at the picture, it's not hard to find. Gorilla Glue gel in a little squeeze bottle. Or go to Dave's World's channel. He has a lot of resin building stuff. This glue works real well and real fast. In fact, it works so fast with resin that I should suggest that you better be 100% sure where you're putting your part because the second it makes the connection, it's over. The weathering with these, eh, I am once again, this is not my weathering technique. This is literally slapdash. And when I tell you it's a speed build, I'm speed building it full on. So I use like, you know, I think it's the Tamiya weathering powder. It's actually better than you think. It's real simple, real easy. Bang, bang, boom. You can move stuff around with your finger if you don't like it. It's very user-friendly for builders. So if you don't want to mess around with oil paints, which I can understand, oils take a while, and then, you know, the, the little dots are different colors, and it's, you know, it's real time-consuming. As you could tell from my video, I'm building my hangar bay where I used oil paints to weather the floor. Go take a look at that if you want to see that sort of thing. With these, I wanted them done that day. I wasn't going to be doing like a multiple day slow painting process with these. I was just like, we're knocking it out. And that's what I did. I also used some, uh, oh God, I forgot what these things, they're like weathering pencils from AK. Uh, what's that company called? Something like that. It's got an AK in it for paints. Um... And these are great. A lot of people sit there and go, oh, use watercolor pencils. The cheaper you scrub. Well, screw you. I'll do what I want. I'm liking these. They're very user-friendly. Easy to get around. They're just as good, if not better, than the Tamiya stuff because it has more room for stuff you can do. You can actually write on your model kits with these. I did it on the uh, Zaku. I wrote Sig Zeon on the shoulder. I don't think people really cared. It didn't look that good. I probably should have put more effort into it. But I wanted to look like somebody just spray canned it. And it didn't come off well, whatever. Um, with these, you can also hit them with water and dilute it. You can like get all sorts of crazy effects. In the right hands, these are lethal as far as weathering goes. I'm not that guy. As always with me, I'm studying paint. I'm studying painting. Uh, when I got into Gunpla, I spent months looking up different paint styles, different airbrushing styles from all forms of model making and hobby stuff. I even watch like painting human skin because there's a lot to learn. And one of the places I have been spending a lot of time trying to learn stuff from is like the Warhammer community and the miniature figure painting community, you know. Guys like uh, the Miniature Maniac, etc. I think I've been watching him for years. And I started getting into Citadel paints. I remember a woman on Instagram was telling me I need to try them out for figures. And I finally got around to it. Citadel's expensive, by the way. And I hear the shelf life isn't good. You know what? I like these paints a lot when it comes to painting tiny details and splash tones. 
And I think I'm going to spend more time trying to understand the subtle nuances of it. Now, as I said before, the Olga figure, or Orga, however you say his name, like the definition, or I should say the details in the little figure aren't that strong. They're very, very weak. So I had to paint them in by hand. So every muscle you saw in photos, I hand painted. And I didn't really blend well. I'm going to admit that right now. And it was kind of like, you know, like those sort of uh, hindsight is twenty twenty. While I was painting this and I finished, it hit me after I laid down the matte coat. I was like, why didn't I just start blending colors like I do with airbrush? What the hell was I smoking? You know? And at that point, I was like, screw it. I'll come back to it later. Uh, this is definitely something I'm taking interest in because I think I kind of want to start painting, you know, like resin figures of people like Guts from Berserk or something. And I really want to understand flesh tones. I don't know. I have a lot of weird little interests that I want to apply to Gunpla. I want to expand as a painter as a whole. Uh, this has nothing to do with that. I think uh, this clip, I sped it up by 200%. And as you can see, it's a very slow process. Um, the paint brushes I used, I've talked about this before in my painting pilot figures videos. I've done two of them now. I explained that I use God hand brushes at the time. There's like small, medium, and large, or whatever. I can't remember. And honestly, these brushes, I think they're $7 a piece. In my opinion, they're as good as any of the expensive brushes you see from the major miniature guys. Uh, I can't even remember the name. It's like the brushes that I've been using, they're like some sort of German name, Walther and Steenbeck. I can't remember, honest to Christ. No, that's like a, a maker of miniature hobby stuff. Dude, I can't even remember, all right? I talked about the brushes in that video. Go look at it. And these $7 brushes are, I feel... When it comes to finer details, superior to the brushes that I spent $30 on. Each, each brush alone was $30. I'm not saying they're bad brushes, but I'm saying that I've found more success with these God Hand brushes. Now, that could be because this God Hand brush has a real long, you know, bristle. And it gives me the ability to really get in there and add the details. Um... Maybe the mistake I made is I didn't buy the right brushes for the right jobs at the time. I was new to Gunpla and so on and so forth. But, um, you know, we'll see. I ordered some Squidmar Minis brushes. I think the whole set is 80 bucks for four. So hopefully he ships those suckers out soon. He won't give me a review sample. <laughs> and I've asked, I was like, come on, Squidmar, shake me off a review sample. And he pretended like he didn't know I was there. You heard me, Squid. But, uh, yeah, we'll see what the future holds. When I get those brushes, I'll probably do a review on them and try and paint something tiny for you guys. Who knows? Uh, overall, you're going to need patience for it, though. If you don't have any patience, I do not recommend it. It'll drive you absolutely insane. Um, buy a magnifying glass. I find that magnifying glasses you wear hurt my eyes. So whatever works for you, you know what I'm saying? So overall, I'd say they came out good, especially for something... I rush felt, you know, something I made quickly, painted as fast as possible. I could have done better on Orca's legs, but I wasn't looking to spend a thousand years on this. The kit itself is 45 ish dollars. Then you got to add in shipping to wherever you are. If you're in America, you're looking at at least 20 bucks. So you're looking at spending $60 on these. Oh my god, I think there's a spider web on that. That has ruined it. God, these cameras, man. They pick up stuff that I can't see with my eyes. They're pretty tight, I'd say. Like, if you're doing a diorama, these are going to come in handy big time. Um, unfortunately, I haven't had time to work on my city diorama. I have one building completed. One. I haven't even worked on the street system. I only finished one cop car. And then I think I broke an LED, so it's dim as shit. And uh, the build video, where just a more stylized version of this might come out later. It might not. So just in case, there's this for you. And until next time, uh, if you want any advice on painting, here it is. Paint.
that's my advice if you really want to paint do it and don't worry too much about it if you focus on just doing the best job you can you probably won't be disappointed and also don't bite more than you can chew <laughs>